You are listening to Tech Vibe Radio. It's coming at you from the Huntington Bank Studios. Tech Vibe Radio is your front row seat to Pittsburgh's fast moving technology ecosystem. Tech Vibe is brought to you by the generous support of Blink at 321blink.com, Chorus Call at choruscall.com, C Leveled at C Leveled.com, Compunetics at Compunetics.com. Huntington Bank at Huntington.com, My Benefit Advisor at PTC.MyBenefitAdvisor.com, and PNC Bank at PNC.com. Here are your hosts, the Pittsburgh Technology Council's Audrey Russo and Jonathan Kirsten. Happy New Year, everybody. Can't believe it's already 2022. I'm kicking off today's show in complete style. I'm going to be hanging out with Sanjay Chopra from Cognistics today and a really cool company here in Pittsburgh. And Sanjay is one of these serial entrepreneurs that without Sanjay, Pittsburgh just wouldn't be what it is. And we need a thousand more Sanjays in Pittsburgh as far as I'm concerned. Sanjay, welcome to the show, man. So glad to have you here today. Thank you, Jonathan. I'm delighted to be here, and Happy New Year to you. Thank you very much, Sanjay. I, I just, where did the time go? <laughs> I know, but I'm glad it's 2022. Things are changing. We're heading in the right direction. Definitely. And hopefully we keep going down that path. That's, I like your positive attitude. <laughs> I know sometimes people, it's the new year, they're like, oh, no, the new year. It's like, no, oh, I'm, 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 I'm hitting it with positive momentum, that's for sure. And I can't think of a better way to kick off the new year, to make people excited about all the potential and just what's happening in Pittsburgh's tech sector than talking to a guy like you. You have been there, done that in so many different ways in Pittsburgh's tech scene. And for us to kind of nerd out on what you're doing now. Oh, I'm so delighted to yeah. share my thoughts. So That's thank awesome, you, Jonathan. Dude. So glad to have you here. So glad to have you here. So Delighted like, to be here. If people can't tell, I'm a little excited to have you here because it's just good stuff. I, I think the last time we really talked, we were doing that little pilot thing with Eaton Park. Yes, <laughs> we were we, we were talking with our mouths full, and that, that was just so much fun. And that was like a very long time ago. That was, a, <laughs> I think that four, was too long ago. That was like four or five years ago, or something crazy like that. Before we let's just jump into it real quickly, Sanjay, real fast about your background and some of the other companies that you were kind of started and have been a part of before you started Cognistics. And then we'll jump into Cognistics and what you guys do. I just want people to get a feel that this is somebody that, you know, you build something, you sell it, and then you find another problem to solve, and you continue to do that. And that's what Absolutely. Yeah. So I've been in Pittsburgh a really long time. Okay. I came here in the mid-90s, 95, Yeah. to work actually for a startup back then called Carnegie Group. Yeah, I remember those guys. <laughs> <laughs> so there was another CMU spinoff, and I was super excited. I was a senior software engineer and, nice. you know, working on a lot of C++ programming and (laughs) object-oriented databases. You are going back, man. I love it. (laughs) And it brings back lots of good memories. So it was a great place to be, and I was super excited when the company went public. And, you know, whatever little stock options we had – you could uh, you could you know sell them. I think it was eight dollars a share, okay. so something like that. Right. Uh, but it was a great experience because it taught me of you know importance of customers, importance right. of revenues, taking care of customers. And you know, going public was a big deal. Heck so, yeah, man! I mean, so, yeah, you got to see the whole life cycle going on. I there. did. And then I was at Federated, and th- so I started uh, actually. Going to when when I was at Carnegie Group, a friend of mine, a really good friend of mine, he's now uh, at PNC Bank, Prashant Das. So yes, you know that he guy. was giving his GMAT. So I decided to join him and say, "Hey, I'll do the same." And I ended up at Carnegie Mellon, you know, t- <laughs> again <laughs> called, called GSIA back then. Exactly. And now it's Stepper. Exactly. Uh, so we 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 got our MBA and it's a part of that. You know, and uh, it was a great man. I'm sure you know Don Jones. Of course, we all know Don Jones, man. So Don was my professor. He introduced me to entrepreneurship, and I wrote a little, uh, you know, a paper on you know business plan for for actually onlinechoice.com. Exactly. So when I uh, graduated, I had a commitment for I think two or three million dollars from Duke Enterprises and. 
Draper uh, Triangle yeah, had exactly. come in, and Lycos Ventures was there. Lycos, oh my <laughs> goodness, yeah, you're bringing it all back for me. That's so crazy. It's like, wow, it's like 1999. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> it is. Uh, so we, we did uh, online choice. It was a great experience. We raised a bunch of money. We were actually aggregating demand for essential services, natural mm-hmm. gas, health insurance. So it was an interesting ride. A lot of learning experiences yeah, there. Yeah, that's what's so cool. With after that, I started Intellions, where we were able to sell the IP and technology to mm-hmm. Google. So that yes. was a good outcome. For that's pretty cool. Fun. I mean, so that's a good thing on your resume. There, sold stuff to Google, right? Yes, that, that's pretty cool. When Google <laughs> wants to buy your stuff, it's pretty good. <laughs> it is pretty good. So we actually had great patents, and even now, to date, Amazon, Facebook, all these big companies. Uh, use that same technology. Really? So, yeah. Oh, that's pretty awesome, man. It's still in it use is. today. So anytime based on time and location, mm-hmm. if you do a search, yeah. so find a pizza place close, close to me. Yeah. I do we that had, quite often, yes. We had a patent on that. So. Very cool, man. <laughs> so, so <laughs> we were also doing you know, lots of you know optimizations on the websites for, uh, for ads. So A-B testing. Simple right. A-B testing oh, or complicated cool. A-B testing, we had patents on that. And obviously, those are very valuable when we had applied to, uh, for them back in 2001. So you're like an internet pioneer in so we were, many ways. I mean, when you're talking about that kind of technology that you patented, I mean, these are like the fundamentals as to how the, as how the, how the web works in this day and age. And I still <laughs> it, uh, had to remember explaining to people <clears> – <throat> That the internet will be a big thing. <laughs> exactly. People will be buying and selling on the web. They will. No. <laughs> and uh, people had questions about that kind of, of stuff. Oh, absolutely. You know, oh, will somebody give you a credit card online? My best example is uh, when I was at Federated Investors, and this was the internet was a very new thing back then. And uh, what they did was published uh, publications. So every quarter we used to make like a book of all the mutual funds, mm-hmm. American leader funds, all the other funds that they have. And by the time the quarter rolled off, you took the information, top 10 holdings, Morningstar ratings, who's the portfolio manager, and then you push it uh, to the, I think the printer was in Chicago, and they print the booklet, and then you go and distribute it. The information is already out of date, and you've got to repeat the whole process. Right. So I said, why don't we put it online? Like, what? <laughs> exactly the reaction. You can, do, like, you can do that? None of our customers are going to go to the web to look for this stuff. I said, oh, really? Okay, let's, let's see. find out. <laughs> oh, my so, goodness. Yeah, that, that brings back memories. It really memories. does. It does. It does. Very cool. And so, so at what point then did you uh, found Cognistics? So Cognistics, we started in 2015. So I was wow. helping a Giant Eagle with their technology. Right. One big project we rolled out which is also now very successful, is curbside. Yes. Little bit did we know that the pandemic is going to offer. bring that whole thing. And that's going to take off. Exactly. In fact, uh, a big problem back then was when people were, uh, you know, shopping uh, on the web for groceries. Picking up somebody else's groceries is a very complicated task. It is labor intensive. Yes. And uh, it was how to price it, how to optimize the picking. So lots of challenges there, but I'm so happy that it's launched and it's doing well. That's awesome. And a lot of people are using it. We're going to talk about some of your clients in the next segment because you work with some great Pittsburgh icons and international companies as well, too, which is so cool. Yes. So just give us the quick elevator pitch of Cognizix. So you do lots of things when it comes to artificial intelligence. We call it AI a lot here on the show just for short because we're fast with the acronyms here, Sanjay. Um, so give, give us the elevator pitch as to how like you – Cognistix uses AI to make people's lives easier. Absolutely. Solve tough problems. So, Jonathan, we started, like I said, back in 2015 as a bespoke AI company. Right. So, as you know, Eric Nyberg, Dr. Eric Nyberg, who's my co-founder, he also was at Carnegie Group. I've known him for, you know, a really long time. I didn't realize he went back to the Carnegie Group as well, too. That's we do, cool. and he was part of Intellion. Right. And then, okay. Uh, so, I was getting bored a little bit between <laughs> Giant Eagle and IBM, and I said, i got to start again. Right. And Eric's the one who gave the idea, let's start a AI company. And we wanted to focus on open question answering systems. So, these are right. complicated problems where you can ask 
uh, the web anything and it comes up with the answer. What's sort of. the meaning of life? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's a great question <laughs> with lots of answers. What will 2022 bring for us? <laughs> there you go. So questions like this. So NLP, natural language processing, mm-hmm. was a big focus okay. of his research and our expertise. So we started Cognistics to solve problems uh, like that. So SAE, Society of Automotive Engineers, is a great client of ours. Just to give an idea sort of what we've been able to build for them is a tool where we have parsed all their standards information. So parts and materials. That's a lot of standards, man. That's all I can say. Lots of unstructured text. And unstructured text, the most complicated text of all. Yes. So what we do is parse it all, understand it, see what part, what material, what dimensions are uh, mentioned in those standards and give the ability for a user to search it. So if I'm a Boeing or a NASA or a Pratt & Whitney design engineer, I can look at it and say, this particular bolt, which has so much tungsten or chromium in it, or this dimension, show me all the standards that are mentioned. Awesome. And we are able to do that with 99.99% accuracy. That's pretty cool, man. And the reason why that is important is companies like this are making aircraft engines and not refrigerators. Exactly. We don't want airplanes going down. <laughs> no. that, that bolt has to hold or the <laughs> engine bolt. falls off. Or, or bad cool. things happen. See, that's such a cool example. We're going to take a quick break. We're going to have more examples as to how Cognistics makes that kind of magic happen with the power of AI, artificial intelligence. We've been talking to Sanjay Chopra of Cognistics. Go to Cognistics. That's with an X at the end, dot com. You can learn all about what they do. It's fascinating stuff. Hold on tight, guys. We'll be right back. This is Jonathan Kirsten with the Pittsburgh Technology Council. You can learn more at pghtech.org. For more than a decade, Blink has been producing unique creative services and solutions that tell a story, move hearts, and drive decision-making that advances business objectives, your business objectives. We adopt a company-wide policy of candor, transparency, and a good old-fashioned work ethic in the pursuit of building long-lasting relationships with our clients and our partners. From video and design to strategy and digital marketing, Blink is here to creatively advance your business. Visit us at 321blink.com. The Pittsburgh Technology Council has been helping our region's tech companies succeed since 1983. The Pittsburgh Technology Council helps its members meet new customers, hire top talent, make headlines, and have a strong voice in government. From startup to multinational, the PTC helps tech companies and advanced manufacturers of all sizes. See how we can help your venture grow at pghtech.org. That's pghtech.org. All the cool kids are listening to Tech 5 Radio, and so are you. Tech 5 Radio is coming at you from the Huntington Bank Studios and is made possible by the generous support of our sponsors, Link, Chorus Call, Sea Level, Compunetics, Huntington Bank, My Benefit Advisor, and PNC Bank. Here are your hosts, the Pittsburgh Technology Council's Audrey Russo, Jonathan Kirsting. Welcome back, everybody. So glad you woke up super early this Sunday morning. I know you might feel groggy, but you should be wide awake now because we are talking to Sanjay Chopra of Cognistics, super awesome artificial intelligence company. These guys make the impossible possible. Talk about unstructured natural language, <laughs> things like that. We are just trying to get answers and find data. These guys make it happen. And before we went to break, uh, Sanjay, we were talking about SAE and how you can basically a customer can search through their whole catalog of standards. And you said with 99.999 something repeating bar percent accuracy, get the, the proper standards that they need to find. You're doing this with so many other really cool customers. What comes to mind you think our listeners should know when it comes to how you guys are, for lack of a better term, kicking butt? No, there. absolutely. Thank you, Jonathan. Yeah, making, for Pittsburgh, the making Pittsburgh proud out oh, there. How about thank, that? Yeah, thank absolutely. you. Thank you for the kind, wor- uh, kind words. And, of course, you know, what we've built for SA is pretty special with the tool, what they call on queue, Right. To be able to search and find standards. And they're in the process of rolling it out. So I really, really would recommend people to check it out. So besides uh, SAE and NLP, the other areas where we're very strong 
is our ability to look at large amount of transactional data. Interesting, okay. So companies that have emerged over time, have acquired other companies, gets lots of purchase order or sales orders uh, or customer data that's messy, AI can actually go in and help clean the data. Ah, okay. Not only clean the data, once you have clean data, then you can find anomalies. Hey, how come I'm getting a purchase order where the price of the flag is $320 million dollars instead of 320 because somebody fat-fingered and added right. a few zeros. <laughs> or someone's making a lot of money somewhere, and we don't know about that. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it's or, even better. Yeah, you can start detecting fraud with this stuff, right? <laughs> or how come the order date, the delivery date, is before the order date? Ah. It cannot be you know, cannot delivered be exactly. before right, you right. haven't even placed an order. So you look at all the transactional data. Yeah, I can find these issues and actually help you solve customer problems clean your data, and then build models, ensemble of models on top of it to get you the right answers from that data. That's so cool. I mean, this is like the difference between success and failure in this day and age in business. Having this type of intelligence, that type of clean data, that you can actually make it actionable at that point, right? Because we all have the data, but if it's not great, and if you can't make any actions on it, then it's, it's useless. It's like they say, you know, garbage in, garbage out. Exactly. So even if you're putting garbage in, which you didn't want to do, right? but over time you evolved, you acquired some companies. So I've seen cases, I will not name the company, okay. where Dell Computers was named 50 different ways. Oh, my God. Wait, how do you name Dell 50 different ways? <laughs> Dell Inc., Dell Computers, Dell Texas, wow. Dell. And, you know, they had 50 variants of the same company Insane. that they were dealing with. And as you clean up your vendors yep. and you look at your vendor tables because you've acquired other companies, they had Dell, right. spelled a different way, Dell Inc. period. Now you put all this information together, it's the same. You want to see how much business I'm doing with them. Unless you have clean data, you will not be able to do that. And you probably find you might be double paying things at times too. Probably. Hopefully not. Yeah. I was like, if you got forty five different names for Dell out there, I'm thinking <laughs> someone got two laptops. Then, <laughs> oh, that's just me. Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. just so cool. And this is like, I mean, the fact that you can bring this technology on, and you work across any any business segment. It seems like we do, yeah. we do on on our bespoke site. But Jonathan, what we're also doing now, yeah. especially as we started last year. And we continue to grow as a result uh, quite a bit. Uh, is uh, we moved from a bespoke, more of a bespoke strategy to right. a product strategy. It's something someone just p- applies it to, and it just works across the top, as opposed to you going in and tailoring and setting Correct. it up, right? Okay. Because what we learned very quickly, over quickly meaning four or five years, yeah. <laughs> that that bespoke is a treadmill. Right. You got to keep on running faster to produce the same results. So is this like a software as a service then that you it can is then go? Ah, I love service. it, Sanjay. I love it. And it's uh, making it you know scalable, growth oriented. So data quality engine is one of the products we talked about. Right. Document intelligence, the example that we were talking about, the okay. Society of Automotive Engineers. Right. And the coolest one that we have just launched last month in uh, December. 2021, mm-hmm. was uh, Molecule AI. Yeah, tell us about that. That sounds really cool. So what it is, is as you, if you're an early stage drug discovery company, okay, and you have to test millions of molecules to see which ones could be viable drugs at the end of the day. Right. So you have to, mm-hmm. init- what the typical process is, you take molecules, you th- think of them as good qu- candidates, you look at the toxicity of those molecules, mm-hmm. how do they bind with uh, various receptors, neuroreceptors or other receptors in the human body, uh, what their efficacy will be. You do in vitro testing. A lot of time going on here. A lot of time and <laughs> a lot, lot of, of human cost time and cost. And money. And then you do animal testing and then you do human testing and then the drug is launched. What we have introduced up front in this process is what we're calling in silico testing. So working with Magic Med Industries or Inveric, they just got acquired by a public company called Inveric. Okay. And uh, what we have enabled them to do is in silico testing. And what I mean by that is the following. We can now come up with the initial molecules. AI actually 
comes up with different variants of those molecules on its own. If there's bromine, maybe change it to fluorine or nitrogen. You can run those tests super fast and you get results. In the computer. In the computer, so without the lab at that Uh, point. And you don't have to do assay testing. So how much faster now are they? Much faster. I was going to say. Because you can look at toxicity, you can look at binding effect, affinity, and sort of, you know, um, really narrow down the search space and say, here are top candidates that you should do in vitro testing, saving them significant amount of time and cost in the process. Very cool stuff. This is why I'm so fired up to talk to you, because I think about that kind of power, and that's coming out of Pittsburgh. You know, from a guy that's done everything and anything under the tech sun here, and you keep coming back to do things like this, Sanjay. So much fun. I need another hour to talk to you. Oh, we'll 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 do it. We're almost out of time. It's like, ah. But thanks for stopping by. If people go to Cognistics, that's C-O-G. Make sure I get this right because C-O-G-N-I-S-T-X dot com. Because you got to go there and just nerd out on the site. You can see all the different ways they're using AI, artificial intelligence, to solve tough problems and find answers to tough questions. Sanjay, Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you as well, and Happy New Year to all the listeners. Absolutely, man. 2022 is going to be an awesome year, simple as that. And everyone, make Tech Vibe Radio part of your new year every Sunday here at 6 a.m. sharp. And in case you can't wake up in time, go to pghtech.org and download the podcast. Have an awesome Sunday, everybody. This is Jonathan Kirsting from the Pittsburgh Technology Council. Learn more about us at pghtech.org. The Pittsburgh Technology Council has been helping our region's tech companies succeed since 1983. The Pittsburgh Technology Council helps its members meet new customers, hire top talent, make headlines, and have a strong voice in government. From startup to multinational, the PTC helps tech companies and advanced manufacturers of all sizes. See how we can help your venture grow at pghtech.org. That's pghtech.org. Tech 5 Radio is coming at you from the Huntington Bank Studios and is made possible by the generous support of our sponsors, Link, Chorus Call, Sea level Compunetics, Huntington Bank, My Benefit Advisor, and PNC Bank.